Okay, we're going to take a look at the game uh, Eilau, Napoleon's Winter Battle, 1807. And this was produced by GDW in 1980. And it was designed by Rick Fontana, and the developer was Frank Chadwick. Now this game came out about five years after 1815, the Waterloo Campaign, which um, I've done a video for already. And this game is based very much on that same system. There's a lot of similarities. Uh, we're going to take a look at the board, the counters, some of the rules, and I'm going to show you some of the other Eilau games that I've been doing videos on, and uh, we'll do a little bit of a comparison. Now, cosmetically, the map resembles uh, the Eilau game, Napoleon the Eilau, that appeared in Strategy and Tactics magazine, and that's the map we have below us there. Again, um, showing Eilau, the main roads leading out of it. You can see the interpretation of the terrain is very similar as it should be, to the um, GGW one. The GGW map, I think, is superior to the um, S&T one. Um, but I thought it would be fun to just compare them. You can see they, they do have a similar look to them. Let's take a look at another Eilau map. Okay, and here's the map uh, to Eilau that was done by Avalanche Press. I did a video on that one. This one is much smaller physically than the other two maps. I'll try to zoom away here a bit and you can see it is much smaller. It's a very nice looking map though. I always liked it. And I did a video kind of a review of that too. But for this video we're going to concentrate on the GGW one. We'll zoom in on the pieces and uh, look at the charts and I'll tell you a little bit about how the play of that game goes. Now I've been spending a lot of time lately playing Eilau games and um, I think I know the reason for that. I'm a resident here of uh, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, and it's certainly winter out there. And uh, I guess uh, since Isla was fought in the winter, actually during a blaze, um, I get in the mood to play these uh, winter games and to prove it's winter out there. You can see the snow on the ground. And we're getting plenty of up, up, up here. But um, this Isla game of the three I've played, I think might turn out to be my favorite one. Let's uh, take a closer look at the pieces. This is the game um, after about four or five turns of play. I, this is not the setup. And I've been kind of doing a solitaire game here. And uh, you can see the pieces. They use the standard uh, NATO symbols, uh, which is very um, prominent or being used a lot in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, those are the Russians, of course. Those are units of Dr. Oz's division. You can see the leader there, and there's uh, General Benningston and General Anrep. Over here are Cossack units in gray. You can see they've got a movement factor of nine. And there's uh, Tuchkov's division. Let's uh, swing it around and take a look at the French. Okay, we're actually still looking south here from the uh, Russian point of view. But there you can see Napoleon in the town of Eilau, uh, Bercy, which commands the guard. You can see the guard units are in white and the standard uh, French corps have black on blue. And there's General Soult. You can see the large red lines, those are major arteries, major roads. And we're just going down the line to the French right flank. And you can see Murat's division. Over here on the far, far right is where Davout's corps will come on to threaten the uh, Russian left. Way over here on the right, the swampy area is, is where uh, the Stocks Prussians will come in and eventually Marshal Ney, for those of you who are familiar with the battle. Okay, rules. Well, there's only eight pages of rules, and they're done in the standard GDW, just paragraph style, not uh, with a lot of numbered subcases, which means it's a little difficult to look up specific rules. I usually make a copy, then highlight and yellow in things I think are important. Um, it's not a hard game to learn. Um, it's very well done, in my opinion. Now, we'll take a look at the turn record chart. That's fairly straightforward. Each turn is a half hour. And here you have this demoralization chart. Now, the commanders, each corps or division has a demoralization level. For example, Murat, uh, his cavalry corps, once it reaches 31 losses, it's considered demoralized. For example, Ney and Argero, they would be demoralized at 37. And you'd track these losses with these markers. When you reach that level, the core is demoralized. 
straightforward and easy. S&T's version had a, a demoralization level two, but it worked a little bit differently, although it was still by casualties. Your combat results table is very uh, straightforward. The charts were not very colorful in those days. We've learned to make them a lot more colorful now. Um, there's the terrain effects chart. At Eilau, a lot of the terrain just doesn't matter. It was uh, snowing heavily. There was lots of snow on the ground. So lots of, um, of the terrain just kind of melts away. I did notice something missing on the terrain effects chart. The uh, swamp, which we see so prominently there, is actually missing on the uh, chart. So I took it to be like stream. It says no effect as other terrain. So that's the way I've been playing it. Uh, very few of the terrain features actually hinder movement. Uh, the lake hexides make a difference when you have to retreat across them, and artillery can't cross them. But the terrain kind of melts away uh, because of the weather here. And I'll get to the weather rules in a minute. There's your bombardment results table. Artillery can fire uh, long range, sometimes from uh, as long as seven hexes, or actually eight or it can be as short as two hexes, or point blank. We've got a Cossack attack table, and we've got weather charts. Now, I allow, to give the game flavor, a lot is going to depend on the weather rules. Um, it was fought in a winter uh, setting, and uh, in fact, at one point there was a huge blizzard. And uh, each turn you're going to roll for weather to see what the effect is. And there's kind of three effects. There's mild, light snow, and heavy snow. Mild doesn't do much at all. Light snow uh, possibly influences the combat results by one table. So if you have a two to one and you roll a six, it'd become a one to one. So uh, that's the effect of light snow. Heavy snow is different in that um, you can move out of zones of control, which you normally couldn't do in light snow and mild. So that's the effect of heavy snow. And there's other severe movement factors, uh, limitations to it too. Each Eilau game has had different snow rules. And um, I have to say, I think the Avalanche Press had the best snow rules of them all. They're so uh, good that I think I might even plug them into this game next time we play. And there's your reinforcement chart. As a lot of you might know, the uh, French third corner, De Vu, came up on the Russian left and um, was quite instrumental in the battle. And later, uh, the Prussians under Lestock arrived uh, to be pursued by Ney's corps, which arrived after that. Losses uh, do affect morale. Uh, there's some units that have special dots on them. There's one, for example, and that shows that it's an assault unit. So any unit with a dot has special assault capabilities. Essentially, uh, you'd be minusing one from the dice. And there's your unit identification chart. It's all fairly uh, straightforward. And uh, since they are historical regiments, you've got a whole host of um, short forms to show you specifically what the names of these regiments are. So this game has got a lot of historical flavor. And I've been playing it for a few turns here, and I'm very impressed with it. I won't say too much more about the game, except that um, I think of the three I've played, the Avalanche Press one, the s and one, and this one, I think I favor this one the best. Now, I have yet to play the Marshall Enterprises version, which is Eilau at the, literally, the regimental battalion level. And that's a monster game, huge game, which would take a long time to play. So I don't know uh, if I'll ever get to that. I certainly would like to set it up and move some counters around. So um, that's all I've got to say about Eilau. So that's it for Eilau. Overall, a fine game in my opinion. I picked it up uh, in a trade. I missed it back in 1980. I don't know why, because I was, was interested in Eilau. Um, I think it's a good game. I'll, we're going to give it a try tomorrow in a face-to-face -face encounter and uh, see how it goes. So this is my um, short, short summation of uh, Eilau by GGW, published in 1980. Thank you for watching.